so uh, see today we are going to uh, learn something very 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 important uh, uh, and that is uh, tracheostomy now tracheostomy becomes highly important because that is the way you can save life one of the places where it, uh, if you can save lives is the tracheostomy an emergency airway access is one of the most important things and when you cannot evacuate and cannot ventilate your left is only one option the left is only tracheostomy there is no other option if you cannot intubate cannot ventilate that means you cannot hold a mask and you cannot ventilate you cannot intubate you cannot intubate okay when both of these are occurring the only way you can do this is by doing a tracheostomy there is no other way there is absolutely no other way to save salvage the patient and you know once the patient gets hypoxic then that patient remains gcs 3 by 15 for entire life their overall functional uh, situation becomes extremely poor you are aware of that right you are aware of that so if a patient is not if a tracheostomy is not done in time it is they take time to do a tracheostomy the tracheostomy is not done well there can be serious implications in the future these patients will probably uh, remain maimed for life remember this they cannot they cannot get back to normalcy so that's why uh, understanding the tracheostomy is very important because this occurs in an emergency situation it, it will not occur uh, electively it is an emergency situation and if you don't know how to do it it is a 100% guarantee that this patient will not do well because at this stage you are in a situation where you cannot intubate and you cannot ventilate you are in that situation okay and you know that within 4 to 5 minutes the brain will probably suffer within 4 to 5 minutes the brain will suffer so how much of oxygen you are giving it, you have to get into the airway within minutes if you don't get in within minutes he is gone for life he or she is gone for life. clear so uh, tracheostomy has been described right from biblical times okay it has been described uh, in the bible all in, in, in very very early before christ they uh, there was uh, there was a prophet who actually put in a bead inside a small bead that they got and they actually ventilated and saved lives okay so it is not a fair it's not a new procedure obviously over a period of years it has been modified remodified to an extent that we have two kinds of tracheostomies okay you have percutaneous tracheostomies and you have surgical tracheostomy so there are two two absolutely different type of tracheostomies percutaneous tracheostomies and surgical tracheostomies all right am i mean when i say tracheostomy even it also can be called as tracheotomy so if you hear tracheotomy it is the same as tracheostomy okay however a cricothyrotomy is very different from a tracheostomy a cricothyrotomy is very different from a tracheostomy why what is the difference between a cricothyrotomy and the tracheostomy if i ask uh, nimat what is it difference sir in cricothyrotomy we just uh, we pierce the cricothyroid membrane in tracheostomy we just cut the car tracheal cartilage so in a tracheostomy you are going to the trachea in the cricothyrotomy you are going to the cricothyroid membrane that is the difference the cutting of the cartilage or not cutting of the cartilage does not come over there clear uh, so when you say cricothyrotomy means you are going through a membrane called as a cricothyroid membrane and when i am saying tracheostomy it means you are going through the trachea okay through the trachea clear on this so you should you should be clear in your mind what is a cricothyrotomy this means to say if i have a crico i am just going through a membrane means the fastest technique to get through would actually be a cricothyrotomy if i am just going through a membrane i'm not going to muscle i'm not going skin i'm not i'm not going to the rest of the things that pass the <coughs> neck means what is happening I, it is the fastest technique you can get through that's why a cricothyrotomy is the fastest technique to get into the airway clear because you don't have anything you don't require to dilate you don't require to do anything you don't you know it's your in the moment you touch it you are that's why understanding the cricothyroid membrane by whatever techniques you want palpation by ultrasound is an extremely important thing you must know understanding where the so it's a lot of students that if a patient comes in and you feel this patient may require ventilation i have already understood where the tracheothyroid membrane is it is always good to actually touch and figure out so whenever i intubate my patients the first thing i do is i put my hand on the neck to figure out whether i can palpate the tracheothyroid membrane once i once i have palpated i know oh, if this patient i cannot intubate i can put a tracheothyroid <coughs> you understand the difference between a cricothyroid uh, thyroid uh, thyroidotomy and tra a tracheostomy is also the size of the tube okay now in a cricothyroidotomy the size of the tube that you will insert will be very small you can't insert a big tracheostomy into a cricothyroid membrane 
You understand? Hmm? So I may want to use the dilator of this particular tracheostomy. I may want to use the dilator of this uh, of this particular tracheostomy tube, and just the dilator will be inside. You are understanding, huh? Uh, unlike a tracheostomy, so the the hole will be very small. So classically, cricothyrotomy is usually used usually for emergency airway management. Clear on this? Uh, any questions till now? Difference between cricothyrotomy and tracheostomy? Any any questions? Any questions? How many? How much time we can secure? Sustain this. No, so it is it is actually just a bridge, bridge before you actually secure an airway. It is only a bridge. Have we done it in this hospital? I have done it at least four or five times here in this hospital in the past. You know, in the past when we had situations where uh, we just couldn't get the airway, so uh, the uh, there was an earlier consultant over here. She has also done it, cricothyrotomy, uh, and we we had the habit of always touching the neck, always touching the neck whenever we want to intubate, so that we know okay this is where the cricothyrotomy is. I mean the membrane is. So once you know where the membrane is, you know for certain that I can get through very easily. It doesn't take too much of skill. It is very simple because you have to just identify the membrane and go dead dead central. That's all that is required to do. Identify the membrane and go dead central. That is all that is required to do in cricothyrotomy. Okay, there is nothing more to be done in cricothyrotomy, and it secures there. So we have done it three, four times. I think uh, not three, four, only three times we have done it. But we did it. We we have done it, and we know that we can get into that area very easily. Okay. So now when you come to tracheostomy, there are two types. Surgical and percutaneous. Percutaneous, what is whole number of types? So, what is the uh, first of all? Why do you need a tracheostomy? If somebody asks us, what are the indications for tracheostomy? There are many indications. So, what are the indications, Alia? So, for uh, for an emergency, in an emergency, you may require a tracheostomy, but that is not tracheostomy. That is cricothyrotomy. You may want to do percutaneous tracheostomy also, it is fast enough. If you are very good at your work, percutaneous tracheostomy also can be done within 2 minutes, 2 3 minutes. But on an average, we say tracheostomy is in the right sense. Was the initial technique called a Sia glass technique, which takes around 10 to 15 minutes, we'll come to that. Okay, so so you can for emergency airway access. Okay, then. So normally we say emergency airway access, then we say FONA. Uh, what is FONA? Front of neck access. Front of neck access. Okay, because emergency airway access can be even uh, endo endotracheal intubation through a bougie. Okay, so we normally say for FON. Okay, front of neck access. Nearly some oral surgery. Yeah, so so very important. So if you have an oral surgery that is done, an oral surgery that is done, and every the anatomy is completely changed, that everything has been repositioned and is suspecting that there is going to be huge edema, then they do a prophylactic tracheostomy in the operation theater itself. Other way round. If you have an extremely bad trauma, something like a Lefort 3, there are Lefort grades of fractures, <coughs> Lefort 1, 2, 3. So the Lefort 3 fracture, which is a fracture of the face, there person cannot breathe. So at that phase, uh, uh, stage, you will require to have a percutaneous tracheostomy. Okay, so a percutaneous tracheostomy as an emergency airway access for elective procedures, uh, post procedure. Then? Prolonged Yeah, so prolonged. So what is the definition of prolonged ventilation, Ashok? So, uh, by definition, what you are saying is right, by the NEGM definitions, it was more than 7 days. The NEGM actually went away and said tracheostomy is to be considered once the patient requires ventilation for more than 7 days. However, we are no longer looking at that definition. We are actually dividing early and late tracheostomy based on a trial called as a TRACMAN trial. Okay, there is a trial called as a TRACMAN trial, which you all should know the name TRACMAN because it's, it's a landmark trial that we did. That everybody did. So more than more than 900 patients recruited in British ICUs all all over Britain, and that is where they figured out whether uh, it's early or late. But there the definition was 10 days. There the definition was 10 days. Okay. So less than 10 days is early. More than 10 days is late. So when you say early, it's less than five days if you think about it. Okay. But when you say prolonged, it is more than 10 days. So you could say 7 to 10 days is what you could put it as because NEGM says 7 days, the ANSIX guideline says 10 days and the TRACMAN trial says 10 days. Clear? Huh? So when you say what is prolonged, you say anywhere more than 7 to 10 days. Don't say 7, don't say 10. Okay, because NEGM says 7, okay, the TRACMAN trial says 10 and the ANSIX group says around 10. Hmm? So prolonged, but why do you need it? Why do you need tracheostomy in prolonged ventilation? Why do you need it? Mother, why? 
So, so dead space is not much of a problem. Yes, it will reduce the dead space definitely. Then, sorry. Yeah. So importantly, the tracheal toileting becomes much more easier. Tracheal toileting becomes easier because no longer there is a larger tube to take out. There is a smaller tube that we had to keep uh, painted. The smaller tube. So tracheal toileting becomes simple. Then, then. And when you say uh, the the red space comes down, you need to say that the uh, work of breathing probably will be a little bit lower as compared to the endotracheal. It's not much difference, but a very small difference would come there because there is Poiseuille's law. Poiseuille's law actually says uh, that if the <coughs> radius comes down or the length reduces, uh, the uh, the resistance you know reduces by four times. It's like an IV cannula. Uh, it's like an IV cannula. The, uh, the smaller the cannula, the larger the flow. The smaller the cannula, the larger the flow. That's why a central line has got low flow as compared to a peripheral line. A central line has got low flow of fluids as compared to a peripheral line. Clear? Clear? Huh? Clear, huh? That's why a tracheostomy may cause a little bit of resistance, a difference, but it's not majorly clinically significant if you ask me. Okay, then? So, prolonged ventilation can cause injury patterns. Now, what are the injury patterns that it can cause? It can cause tracheal necrosis. And if there is tracheal necrosis, these patients will be maimed for life, tracheomalacia for life. They will not be able to breathe. What is tracheomalacia? The cartilage actually falls like this. Okay, tracheomalacia, the cartilage actually falls like this. Okay, so the patient can't breathe at all for uh, once you try to remove the tracheostomy, once you try to remove the endo endotracheal tube. So the edema reduces because it's no longer through that big crack. So the edema reduces and that's why the problems of long term endotracheal intubation comes down. Then you said tracheal toilet. So we've gone through tracheal toilet, we've gone through both breathing, we have gone through the fact that injury of the trachea comes down. Then what are the other reasons? We can discharge patient with the home. So it is easier to wean off a patient. So what is known? What is known is that from the treatment trial, the same trial that actually looked at early tracheostomy versus late tracheostomy was that we were able to wean off the patients 1.7 days earlier. Huh? You were able to wean off patients 1.7 days earlier. We can actually debate that trial in a big way, but this is what the end result of that trial was. The end result of the trial said that the days on mechanically ventilator support came down by 1.7 days in the group that was tracheostomized earlier. Okay, uh, 1.7 days. Clear on that? So there may be a uh, early, uh, uh, you know, um, there may be a situation that you might be able to wean off these patients early. So when you say length of stay, that would probably then relate to a length of stay coming down. But yes, this is what you're basically telling that you will probably be able to discharge them quicker. Okay, then you're right. What you're saying? Then anything else? Anything else? So the mobilization of the patient becomes much more easier, no? So if you have a patient on an endotracheal tube, he's connected to a big tube that is connected to the ventilator. So mobilizing a patient with a tube on a ventilator is more difficult than mobilizing a patient with a tracheostomy tube. So mobilization becomes much more easy. Now with mobilization comes improvement in muscle mass, with mobilization comes improvement in general condition, with mobilization comes reduction in VAP, with mobilization comes reduction in DVT. So you've got a whole lot of benefits that come in as a result of mobilization. As a result of mobilization, there's a whole lot of benefits that come in when you're mobilizing your patients. Clear? So there's a huge benefit that comes when you mobilize your patient. Simple. Clear? Hmm? Understood mobilization? Then, what else? Now this patient, once you have actually excluded the airway from the esophagus, can now actually eat food normally if you have done a tracheostomy okay he is going to eat his food normally obviously eating food is better than giving it to a rice tube so he may be able to eat food properly which will stimulate saliva which will stimulate his mastication activity which will improve assimilation of food which will give general feeling of well-being will give general feeling of well-being then these patients can be put on a speech valve and made to talk these patients can be put on a speech valve and they can be made to talk. So communication will improve. Endotracheal tube, you can't talk. Huh? You can't talk with an endotracheal tube in place. You can put a speech valve and they can start talking. You understand? So there are various benefits 
that actually comes with the tracheostomy and you must understand which patient this is which benefit you are looking at are you understanding huh? for example why am i telling you this context because if you have a neuro patient that is coming in you know that this patient is going to remain for a longer period of time they are convincing me i want to do the tracheostomy earlier than otherwise in the context of what the illness is the, why we require here it's not for breathing it is for tracheal toileting it is for tracheal toileting so i probably want to do the tracheostomy earlier okay in these patients early when i say early means somewhere around 5 days maybe 6 days i'll probably do it okay but if i have a patient who is ards who is having breathing problem wait no kuch farak nahi padne wala hai either tracheal toileting ka matlab nahi hai we are putting the airway for the patient so that the oxygenation is better wait there is no hurry you understand if there is ards patient Uh, this patient is not going to wean off in one and a half days earlier. What, what is the entire thing? One and a half days earlier will be. Uh, this patient is here. He is going to require ages. You understand? So in that time, take the right time to do a tracheostomy to be when it is absolutely safe to do it. Okay. And in that stage, you probably want to wait. Okay. You want to wait for some time. Then do the tracheostomy. There is no hurry to do the tracheostomy. You are understanding? Huh? Because you have the airway. The reason to put that is actually to oxygenate the patient much better. there the risks of doing the tracheostomy becomes extremely high because of the hypoxia because of the fact that there can be sudden uh, desaturation okay because of the fact that these patients are inflamed so the tracheostomy becomes a secondary inflammation that is coming on top of an inflammation that is already there you are understanding so there are various reasons why you want to defer a tracheostomy and what was also noticed in the treatment trial was many of these patients that they waited did not require a tracheostomy 50% of the patients did not require tracheostomy which they thought they may require tracheostomy they were able to wean them and extubate them and take them you understand that is why you can't take the trial directly on face value and say this is what you are supposed to do it, that is why it is in the context of the patient that you must think okay this patient will require that will require a lot of clinical judgment to understand it's not easy it's not easy why it's not easy you don't want to put a tracheostomy a hole in the neck for anyone nobody wants it nobody wants it yeah? nobody wants it. For life, you will get a hole. You can see it from for ages that your that scar will be there for ages. Not something anybody wants. Clear? So, so now let's come to the differences between a surgical tracheostomy uh, and the percutaneous tracheostomy. Okay, the preparation for both remains the same. So, in the preparation for a tracheostomy, in the preparation for a tracheostomy, there are a few responsibilities that we should have. Okay, what are the responsibilities that we should always keep in our mind? one thing is that all the vital parameters should be seen you cannot do the tracheostomy without having a etco2 you cannot do a tracheostomy without spo2 you cannot do a tracheostomy without having blood pressure and pulse rate you cannot do it uh you it is not possible it is non standard of care and it is wrong to do something like that so all vital monitoring has to be there second thing you cannot do a tracheostomy without having difficult airway cart beside you okay that means a laryngeal mask airway that means bougie that means still at uh, a bronchoscope at hands uh, uh, you know hands uh, reach so these are things that you require in this in this particular ultrasound these are things are without which you should not attempt a tracheostomy you should not attempt a tracheostomy okay third thing what you require so you require entire uh, emergency drug cart which includes adrenaline atropin and you know everything you require everything Uh, that will require for an emergency drug uh, <coughs> clear so you so to begin the tracheostomy you need to definitely have all these equipments the fourth thing that you require is you need to have a, so what are the equipment once more let's go back once more you require all monitoring equipment which includes spo2 blood pressure pulse rate ecg and etco okay you require all of these uh, on the, this particular patient second thing what do you require The entire difficult airway cart it will require, which includes Bugi, uh, LMA, uh, Ambu bags, and a bronchoscope. It will require all of these when you are actually doing a tracheostomy. And the third thing it will require is all the emergency drugs, which includes a tropin, a tropin, a biotrop. Everything includes everything you require at that particular place. Clear? So you cannot start a tracheostomy without having all these things. So these are the three things that we require. The fourth thing, can anybody tell? You cannot start a tracheostomy without looking at laboratory. Percutaneous tracheostomy cannot be done without looking at the laboratory findings. 
that means you are not supposed to do a tracheostomy in a patient whose platelet counts are less than 50,000. It is not supposed to be done. We take it as 80,000. Okay, the guidelines say you need tracheostomy. Uh, your tracheostomy can be done if the tracheostomy is more than 50,000. Okay, however, we take it as 80,000. We don't want to even take that 50,000 because our patient at 50,000 much be will be much more lower because he's critically ill. That platelets may be not working as well. They may be platelet. Just the number deficient is not the only platelet function may be also low. Are you understanding? If the platelet deficit is there, there may be also platelet function problem because our patients are critically ill. That's why we want to maintain it at a higher level, maybe 80,000 is what we want to maintain. But guidelines mention 50,000. Clear? You can't have an INR that is elevated and do a tracheostomy. So you can't do a tracheostomy if your INR is elevated. You can't do it. It's not supposed to be done. Third thing, you can't have a patient in gross sepsis and septic shock with high supports and you're doing a tracheostomy. Not supposed to be done. The chances of having uh, airway loss are very, very high. You're understanding, airway loss and cardiac arrest are very, very high. So you don't want to do it when the patient is on norad, vasopressin, uh, inflamed condition, very badly inflamed condition, sepsis. No, no, wait. Let the patient settle down a little bit because we know doing it early is not going to make a difference for me. We know that. Are you understanding? It's not going to make a big difference for me. That's why a tracheostomy procedure has to be well thought of before you go ahead and do a tracheostomy. It's not something you want to do urgently because this is not pre It's not emergency access. Are you understanding? Clear on this? Yes. Yes. Any questions till now? Any questions? Any questions uh, on the responsibilities as to what we should be getting before a tracheostomy? So we will come to the procedure when we actually come to the procedure. We are not in the procedure yet. We just do the pre-preparation of the procedure. Okay. So pre-preparation is done. Now after we do this, after we do this, then we first understand the difference between a surgical tracheostomy and a percutaneous tracheostomy. So what is the difference between a surgical? Any any idea what's the difference and what is better than the other? So surgical tracheostomy and percutaneous tracheostomy. What's the difference? Come on. What's the difference? Anybody? You, you know what's a surgical tracheostomy? It is done in the in the, in the operation theatre. That's a one, one big difference. No? A surgical tracheostomy is done where? In the operation theatre. Percutaneous tracheostomy is done where? Bedside. That is one difference. Surgical tracheostomy is done in the operation theatre, whereas percutaneous tracheostomy is done in the bedside. Any other difference anybody can say? Okay. Absolutely, very important. So the percutaneous tracheostomy is cosmetically better. Why is it better? Because it is a hole only. It is a very small hole compared to a surgical tracheostomy which is actually an incision that is long. You understand? So for life, see uh, for life this part is never going to be covered. This part is always going to be open. <coughs> so for life you will have a scar when you have a surgical tracheostomy. Compared to a percutaneous tracheostomy which is a very small hole. A very small hole. Okay, so cosmetically a percutaneous tracheostomy is better. Okay, then any any more differences? Chances of bleeding more in you know, yes. So the chances of bleeding are more in a surgical tracheostomy. So the approximate when you say bleeding, when you say more, it means what? More than twenty five mm. That is the cutoff. So whenever trials were conducted to to actually look at percutaneous versus surgical, they considered accidental extubation, more than twenty five mm bleeding and critical events like cardiac arrest as a side effects. So anything more than 25 ml becomes high value. Clear? It's not 1 liter and 500 ml that we think. Because 25 ml means it can go into the airway and patient can choke and die. 25 ml. That is why 20, more than 25 ml is high bleeding. And why does a percutaneous tracheostomy is less bleeding? Any idea? Because it's a small hole. Because it's a small hole. You are not cutting. You are not doing any cutting. You are only taking a small hole like an IV line and dilating. Isn't it? So there is no cutting anywhere. Since there is no cutting, the bleeding is much lesser. So the bleeding is less. Clear. The bleeding is much less. Then? Chances of false passes more surgical with the complication of the surgical. So if you were to not use bronchoscopy, if you were to not use ultrasound, then the chances of having, uh, a, uh, uh, having a wrong placement, for example, lateral placement, uh, are higher in the percutaneous tracheostomy because it's a blind procedure. It becomes blind the moment you have put it inside. The first up to up to the time that your wire goes inside, it is blind. 
uh, once your wire goes inside, then by a bronchoscope you can have a look and say it's open. Now we can actually visualize. You, you understand? You can visualize it up to, or you can visualize only after the wire goes inside. So up to that time, there is a possibility that you may be lateral. Though we are thinking we want to be dead central, uh, there is a possibility you may be lateral because the tracheal size is only 2.3 centimeters on an average. So 2.3 centimeters tracheitis. So you may not go in the center, you may go to the side. Is there a problem going in the side? Yes, there is. What is the problem going in the side? If you go on the side, you might cause injury to the lateral tracheal wall. And if you cause injury to the lateral tracheal wall, there will be scarring, psychiatrization, and then tracheal stenosis. You understand? There will be scarring on that particular area. There will be psychiatrization, it means scar formation, and there will be tracheal stenosis. So you don't want to go lateral. You want to go dead central. So the position can't be, you can't search it like a central line. You know, I'm putting here, I'm putting here, I'm putting here, it's not right. Uh, because if you if you get it somewhere in the lateral wall, then you are you are creating a problem for this particular patient because later on he will have psychiatrization and laryngeal stenosis. Clear? Sir, how do we get to know whether we have got lateral? That is why you need to see properly anatomically, that is why you need to do ultrasound. You, you understand? That is why people say do bronchoscopy because with bronchoscopy you can actually see inside where your needle has come inside. Up to the time that you have dilated, there is no. Uh, uh, up to the time before dilatation, you can actually you can actually change your position. Okay. Once you have dilated, then your uh, the cicatrization will start. You understand? Uh, that is why understanding the anatomy is very very important in these cases. All right. Then, because it's a blind procedure, there is always a possibility that you might hit an artery. Okay. There is a possibility that you may hit an artery or a vein. Okay, you have the innominate artery there and the anterior jugular vein that passes over there. Okay, both these can actually be hit. If you hit that, there is no way you can do anything for this percutaneous patient because you don't have diaphragm, you don't have cautery. You don't have cautery, <coughs> right? You cannot do anything. You have to rush this patient down after securing the airway to the to the to the OT. Okay, so if it hits, that's why the importance of actually figuring out very carefully where you are, and that is why the position is important <coughs> as to where you are going to put the. Uh, put the, the needle, the first needle puncture is so important because that's where everything changes everything. Because going lower or going higher has a chance of hitting these arteries and veins. You understand? Huh? Then what is the difference between surgical? Cost wise, tell me the difference between cost. Cost? Nurses, can you tell me the difference between the cost? What is more expensive? Surgical. surgical. Why is surgical more expensive? You have OT charges, exactly. You have OT charges, you have anesthesia charges, you have surgeon charges, you have OT charges, anesthesia charges, surgeon charges, it becomes very expensive worldwide. Worldwide, the OT is charged at a very high amount. Okay, so worldwide, the, the surgical tracheostomy becomes more expensive than the percutaneous tracheostomy. You might wonder the percutaneous set is 50,000 rupees, uh, but that's the total cost, <coughs> apart from small, small things here and there. But in surgical tracheostomy, you may be spending around 5 6,000 rupees, but there is surgery cost that comes in 30,000, 25,000. You have only <coughs> charges per hour that is coming, anesthesia charges that's coming, which actually increases the entire cost. Clear? Then, apart from this, apart from this, so there is a possibility in surgical tracheostomy that you normally may, uh, you may want to break the cartilage. You may want to break a cartilage over here to go in. Whereas in a percutaneous tracheostomy, you never do that. You, you go without breaking the cartilage but dilating the membrane between it. You understand? So you may not break the cartilage, so the chances of complications are much lower when it comes to percutaneous tracheostomy. Clear? The post-operative problems that you get are much higher with a surgical tracheostomy as compared to a percutaneous tracheostomy. Post-operative complications. When you say post-operative complications, I said decannulation, decannulation. Is, is a problem with the surgical tracheostomy. Why is decannulation a problem? Why is why is the uh, patient get accidentally decannulated? Because the difference is there. No, surgical tracheostomy is a scar. They have made a big incision. The trachea is tracheostomy is sitting on that big incision. You understand? It's a big incision. So uh, the tracheostomy uh, tube is sitting on that big incision. So the chances of accidental decannulation is much faster, much higher. Because what happens in a percutaneous tracheostomy is made a hole. And then you have shoved that tracheostomy inside, and the skin is actually tightening around it. You are understanding? So when you are huh? when you are doing a percutaneous tracheostomy, you are actually putting a hole over there, dilating. Now this, after you have dilated the skin, skin goes back elasticated, so it will hold the tracheostomy. 
since it holds a tracheostomy, accidental decanalation occurs less likely with, than compared to a surgical <coughs> tracheostomy. That is why you may see sometimes when the surgical tracheostomy is done, they actually stitch the surgical tracheostomy to the skin because you are worried about it just coming out. That is one post-operative complication. Second post-operative compl complication with the surgical tracheostomy is because they have cut, the bleeding is higher post-operatively. Because they have cut, the bleeding is much higher, uh, much higher post-operatively. That is why those patients who come from a surgical tracheostomy don't leave them off immediately. Let them be, let them be down for a while. Do not move. Do not do anything. Come for surgery. Wait. Next day morning, start bleeding them off. Whereas in a percutaneous tracheostomy, put it just being start bleeding off because early post-operative complications are less. Early post-operative complications are less. So that's the difference. In a surgical tracheostomy, patient comes to the ICU after a tracheostomy, leave him like that for one day. Next day morning, see what is happening. Right? Whereas the percutaneous tracheostomy, do the tracheostomy, bleed him off in four hours. You don't require to wait because the early post-operative complications are much much less. Clear? Clear this? Uh, the other thing in surgical tracheostomy is the fact that you may be subjected to bleeding. That is another complication which, with the, because of the incision and the bleeding, there is going to be an increased incidence of infections. So we are worried about infections in a tracheostomy that is done surgically because the incision is big, bleeding is there uh, and it is a stressful procedure. Whereas in a percutaneous tracheostomy, the bleeding is less, the incision is smaller, so the infection rate is much much less. Clear? So it's not to be done, no? It's not to be done. That is why we don't want to do a surgical tracheostomy. The only places where a surgical tracheostomy is required is when you can't do the percutaneous. So which are those cases? Which are those cases? Sure. Very sure. Yeah, the anatomy is not good. We started by saying I must know the anatomy. We started by saying I must know the anatomy. So if I can't get the anatomy right, I don't want to attempt the percutaneous tracheostomy because the risks will be much higher. Are you understanding? The risk will be much higher. You got the point? Huh? So in a patient in which I can't do a surgical tracheostomy, huh? in that patient, I like for example, you've got a severe burns patient. I have a severe burns patient. All everything is burnt. I can't even palpate the trachea. I can't even palpate the trachea. When your brain is burnt, everything becomes like, like hard, you know. You can't even palpate anything. So when you cannot palpate the trachea, I don't want to do it percutaneously. I want to do it surgically. You understand? Huh? If the patient has got a very difficult anatomy, very large neck, difficult to palpate the trachea, uh, or maybe you have some kind of surgery that is done, some kind of major surgery that is done, those are those patients in which there will be change or difference in the difference in the place where the tracheostomy is lying. So there I want to do a surgical tracheostomy. Okay. Electively it is done in the operation theater because of the surgery that is there. Because of another surgery that is there. But otherwise, uh, in present scenario, uh, there is really no indication to uh, surgical tracheostomy. It's wrong to do it, in fact, because you're subjecting the patient to a lot of other problems. You are understanding? Are you understanding? It is wrong to send the patient to the operation theater to get a tracheostomy. You, you, you are now you are clear why it is wrong. No, no, because the first up to up to the fact that you enter into the trachea. It is blind. You understand? Up to the fact that you enter, the bronchoscope is only to figure out where the tip of the needle is. The bronchoscope is only to figure out where the. With the typical anatomy, I will not even reach that time. You you understand? By the time I touch here, there, here, there, here, there, I'll get one artery, one vein, one this. We don't know where you are. You understand? Huh? So uh, till that time, it is going to be dangerous, right? By that time, you'll make you'll make all holes, holes, holes everywhere. It doesn't make any sense to do something like that. Clear? Uh, am I clear on this? Huh? So that is why a difficult anatomy cannot be tackled by a percutaneous tracheostomy. That should be very clear. Don't think it's a challenge for me to do it and I will do it. No, it's not. It's not right to do that. Huh? Send it for a, a surgical tracheostomy where it is done under controlled condition and they open, they cut, they see. They open, they cut, they see, and then they put. Clear? Any queries till now? Any queries? We've just understood the difference between surgical tracheostomy and a percutaneous tracheostomy. A percutaneous tracheostomy requires this, this entire set. They require an entire set. Whereas a surgical tracheostomy will... 
Now, before we understand how to do the percutus tracheostomy, we should understand the anatomy. So, Sachin, from top to down, what is the anatomy in your neck? Sorry? No. Ashok? Hyoid. Very good. Hyoid? Alia? Alia? Very bad. Very bad. If you don't know this anatomy, very bad because that means you don't know anatomy. Huh? So this is what your neck is. Okay. The top part, the this the top part of this will be the hyoid bone. You'll have the hyoid bone, then you'll have the thyroid cartilage. You'll have the thyroid cartilage. So hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage. Then you have after the thyroid cartilage, you have the cricoid cartilage. So the cricothyroid membrane is between the thyroid and the cricoid. <coughs> then comes your first tracheal ring, second tracheal ring, and so on and so forth. The approximate length of the trachea is? Yes. Uh, 10 to 13 centimeters. That is the approximate length. 10 to 13 centimeters is the approximate length of the trachea. It's not huge, it's not pipe, it's a very small tube. 10 to 13 centimeters is not too much. That is the length of the trachea. Uh, of the trachea. So 2.3 centimeters is the width. Okay, 10 to 13 centimeters is the length. Okay, and there are 10 around 10 tracheal rings that are there. Clear? Huh? So when you say ring, the only complete ring is actually the cricoid. The only complete ring. The only complete ring is the cricoid. The rest are all incomplete rings. Now, what is the importance of having a complete ring? Palpation is on the front. When I say complete rings means what is happening? You have the cricoid, say from the front. This cricoid has so much low. This is cricoid. It is a full ring. When I say trachea, it is a half ring. Piche empty. Piche tracheal is muscle chakra. There is something called tracheal is muscle. The tracheal is muscle is there. There is nothing there. What are the implications for us as healthcare professionals? What you must understand is tomorrow when you are actually having a patient who is probably going to aspirate or something like that, there is a maneuver. It's called a Selix maneuver, right? What does the Selix maneuver do? <coughs> the Selix maneuver pushes the cricoid to the esophagus. Because there is a bone behind, you can actually occlude the esophagus. When you occlude the esophagus, the chances of aspiration is said to be reduced. Can you occlude with the tracheal ring? No. Why you can't occlude? Because posture is incomplete. That is why as healthcare professionals in the field of intubation and emergency airway management, we need to know where the cricoid is. Understood? Huh? It is only the cricoid that will prevent uh, gastric uh, material from getting into your airways. Clear? Any questions? You have understood this? Huh? So from top to down, can you name it now Ashok? So the biggest biggest prominence is the hyoid bone. Then is the V-shaped cartilage. Is the V-shaped cartilage? Cricoid and then comes. So uh, I think you should see in each other how it is. So if I if I were to see, show it in uh, him or better him. Okay. So you have the hyoid. Uh, you have the hyoid. Then see you press this. Put your hand here. This is the thyroid cartilage. This is a depression here, thyroid cartilage. Then as I come down, the biggest thing I see is the cricoid. This is the cricoid. Touch and see. Touch it. Chandrima. This is the cricoid. You see, this is the cricoid. So this is the thyroid. You can see the B here. Put your finger here. Inside. Yes. Uh, can you see? There's a B here. So this is the uh, it's important to understand it as a B. It's a B. Okay, thyroid cartilage. Then you come down, the maximum problem you see is cricoid. Then you come down to the tracheal rings. Then you get the tracheal rings. And this cannot be felt very well because he is sitting in this position. Okay, so have a look at it. <coughs> so touch. Uh, uh, so you 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 have, so you put the device inside, and then from outside you inflate the balloon. When you inflate the balloon, the balloon opens up inside, and then it kind of dilate, dilates. That is called a sea glass blue dolphin. Clear? Clear on this? Sea glass blue dolphin. And then the last technique, I mean there are two more techniques of which you must know what is the percute twist technique. Percute twist. 
Okay, this also, this also can be used in many areas. One is percute twist. You dilate and then you have a screw like dilator. Okay, that means you, you dilate, then you put another dilator inside and you screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it, as it goes inside, as it goes inside, it becomes dilated, 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 dilated. You understand? Okay, the skin becomes dilated, dilated. That is called a percute twist technique. Okay, there is one more technique with Fontana or something it's called, but I've never seen it. It is going from it going from outside and going from inside. But if you put a guide wire from down and let it come from the endotracheal tube and all these things. So that I have not seen, I have not used, so I don't know about it. Uh, these are the techniques I have used. Uh, the, but this other technique in which you put, there is one more technique. Uh, there is one more technique in which you put a bio retrograde and do things. But we, we will not discuss something that is there. These are the things that are usually done. Okay, so I have not seen that other technique uh, person. Clear? Any, any queries till now? So please repeat the techniques. So the first technique is the modify is a CR glass technique. That was the first technique. CR glass multiple dilated dilatational technique. Multiple dilatational. So what happens in CR glass multiple dilatational technique? You start with the CR with the Seldinger's technique. Then you go from small dilator to bigger dilator to biggest dilator to most big dilator. You understand? And then you put the tracheostomy tube inside. Multiple dilatational technique of CR glass. Clear? The second one is single dilatation that is called as CR glass blue rhino. It's called as blue rhino where you have one dilator that becomes bigger, 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 bigger and you put the, shove the whole thing inside. You open up a track and put the pressure stomach inside. That's called blue rhino. Remember it like the rhino's, uh, you know, uh, rhino's uh, horn. Okay. We have it showing. Let me see it. So that's called CR glass blue rhino. Okay. Then the third technique that we talk is the Griggs technique, where we use a Kelly's clamp, we have a modified Kelly's clamp, okay? Yeah, so this is the blue rhino, see this? This is the blue rhino, it's like a rhino's horn, okay? So in this what happens, you just go inside and you reach inside. Once you're done, you have reached this mark, you see the mark over here? Yes. You reach the mark over here, you're inside, you're perfect, okay? Now you take this out and just put the tracheostomy inside. Huh? Or you put a guide wire through that and put a tracheostomy inside. Okay, this is this is actually comes with that entire set of it. So it goes inside, and then you put the guide wire through it, and then through the guide wire you can put this inside. Okay, simple, clear. Ah, this is the blue rhino. We can't use it. Yeah, there. Dilatation. Dilatation. Ah, it's written on there. What is written on there? So what is written on this is dilatation. Perfect dilatation with blue line ultra. Blue line ultra. We have just changed the name to blue line ultra. Clear? Huh? It's there, is it? Huh? And then the next technique that you have after the Greek technique is the is the CR glass balloon dilatational technique. In the balloon dilatation technique, what is happening? You put the dilator inside and then you inflate a balloon at a pressure so if the skin opens up. The skin opens up, get dilated, and then you put it in, put the next tracheostomy set inside. And the last technique that we talked about was the percute twist technique. Percute twist is you put in Sildinger's wire inside, and then you put a dilator that has that has got you know serrations. Uh, I mean, just a screw mein hota hai, and, paisa, and then you turn it blue color, color, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, it goes inside, and dire, 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 wo dilate hota hai. Clear? So that is the percute twist technique. There is one more technique with retrograde that means you go from down, take out the guide wire, put down, but I don't know that technique. I really don't know that technique. Okay? Or is it the Greeks method? So uh, this is more expensive. This is more expensive. Uh, this is much more cheaper. But if you want to see which is faster, this would be much faster. Now this, what are the problems that you can face with the Greeks method? You can have major problems with all these methods. What is the first problem you can have with all these methods? What is the first problem that you can have with all these methods? All these are blind. Blind procedures. So bleeding, bleeding was all. Apart from all the techniques or problems that we discussed, what are the other problems that you can have? You can have through and through puncture of the esophagus. You can have puncture through and through. You can form a tracheoesophageal fistula. You can go through and through. You understand? That's why don't be over enthusiastic in putting that. It can be very dangerous. Very, very dangerous it can be. Okay? You can have that. The other thing you can have is something called a tracheoenominate fistula. That is the enominate artery and the trachea is in, is in, is in uh, series together. And enominate artery is in artery. Hai. Or as time goes, you know, but sakta hai, and all the blood can go into the trachea. Tracheo enominate fistula. 
we'll come to what happens when you, when you have a tracheotomy fistula and what to do. So if you have a tracheotomy fistula, how will you recognize it? The moment you have, the, for some time there will be blood coming out from inside, blood and blood, lot of blood coming out from inside, blood, actually artery is blood coming out. The only way you can get around this is by putting this further inside and super inflating the cuff. Okay, by putting this inside and super inflating the cuff. In any patient, if you have bleeding, what you should do is put the cuff and inflate, super inflate the cuff. If you super inflate the cuff, more often than not the bleeding will stop. Okay, inflate means, if you can inflate it much higher than what it, the numbers are. Okay, if you look at this, let's try inflating this one. So it is written on the cuff. If you see it is written on the cuff, the volumes. Okay, so what is the volume written over here? Tell me the volume written here. So how much do you think is the volume of this cuff? Huh? So the volume written over here is written over here. See, it's written over here, 24. Okay, but you can go more higher than that. Okay, so let's go more higher than that and see how much it goes. So let's put 10. 10. Okay, let's go higher. 10. 20. 30. 40. You see, he's on 40 and still you can inflate more. See, touch and see. See? You can still inflate more. See, 50. You see this? This is super inflate is on 50. Okay, he's on 50. So it can go as big as this. Our trachea size, how much? 2.3. So if you want to compress it, you, you can actually compress it right here. You see? You can compress it. So you can go even higher than this. Let's not go back because you require to use the nuclear burst because it's the whole one. No? It can go higher than this. It can go higher than this. You, you understand, no? That is why you can never judge. You can never judge this size by touching this. You can never judge this size by touching this. Are you understanding? That's why you need a cuff pressure manometer. If you are managing your patient without a cuff pressure manometer, you are absolutely doing something that is wrong. Because you cannot touch and see the pressure after. You can't do that because now there is a tracheal wall around this also. You don't know the pressure exerted. So I'm right. Clear on this? You understood? That is why three times in the shift a cup pressure manometer needs to be used. Why it needs to be used? If you don't use it, what will happen? There is a high possibility that it is overinflated. The pressures are very very high. And when you say high pressures, means if the pressures are more than 30, there is a chance that the capillary perfusion will reduce because more than 30 venous capillary perfusion comes down. Okay, when capillary perfusion comes down, there will be tracheal necrosis. You understand? It's like a bed sore, na? In a bed sore, why are we worried? Why are we worried about bed sores? Because if the patient is lying like this, the capillary perfusion is coming down, and because because it is getting pressed. Okay, because it's getting pressed, capillary perfusion is coming down. So you develop a pressure ulcer over a period of time, right? Similarly, in this also, the mucosal capillaries, which are even more thinner than your skin or subcutaneous tissue capillaries, it will very quickly come down, and this patient can probably have tracheal necrosis and scar for life with a permanent tracheostomy. Nobody wants a permanent tracheostomy. Nobody wants a permanent tracheostomy. Clear? Yeah. Huh? So this, this can be a major issue. We've seen many cases of permanent tracheostomy. So this is one problem that can you can have. The other problem you can have is over zenith dilatation. That means after you have so how do you do the uh, uh, tracheostomy? You put in first, you first isolate the isolate where you are first. And now we know anatomically how to do it. We'll do it ultrasound wise also. You want to do it right now? Ultrasound wise to see where it is? Yeah. I'll show you. Species of so the anatomy says that here you have the hyoid. Here, this is your tracheal cartilage. Okay, tracheal cartilage. I'm coming down, and the largest bone that I get over here is the cricoid. So, if I have to do a Selix maneuver here, this is where I'll be pressing down. Huh? Cricoid cartilage. Then comes your, up from here to here is your tracheal rings. Okay, so you have first, second tracheal rings that are over here. Clear? When you give the patient a position where you have put something and you have extended the neck, like for example, if he extends the neck, extend your neck, you can feel it much more better. Do it and see. So keep it straight. Now keep your hand and figure out the tracheal ring. Figure out. Require it. Because you have tracheal ring. Hand This is that. You're taking now. You can feel it absolutely well if you only when you extend. Others you cannot feel it. Yeah. You want to try, somebody wants to try it? No, you first keep it straight and now try to feel the tracheal rings.
Now you turn to extend and get it properly. As I'm going. Can you press U? U, U slash U D flip. U D U D flip. Hmm. Okay, so there's nothing here. Okay, there's nothing here. As we go down, what can you see? As you go down, let's see. Okay. So what do you see now? Just talk. My name is Sachin. See what happened to the vocal cords? It's moving. Can you see that? No, sir. No. So what you're seeing here is, black. is the thyroid cartilage. V, can you see a V now? Hmm. Yes. Huh? So you're seeing a V here. Huh? This is your thyroid cartilage. See that? Hmm. See, now you talk now. Hello, everyone. See? <laughs> you see it's moving? Hmm. Huh? So that's your thyroid cartilage. Clear? Once more, you want to talk? Mm. <laughs> uh. Hi. See? Okay. So thyroid cartilage. Now, as you come down, see? Can you see thyroid cartilage? V, you see? Mm. Mm. Now, can you can see his vocal cords much better? Yes. Yes. Shall we talk once more? Hello, everyone. Okay. All right. So this is your. Thyroid. Because you, you see both the thyroids, you come down. Okay, now what do I see now? Huh? I still see the thyroid, see the vocal cords, can you see the vocal cords moving? See that? Yes. See that? Yes. Saw that, huh? vocal cords moving, can you see it? Okay, now let's go down. Okay, that's your vocal cords. Mm -hmm. See? Right, right. Huh? Let's go down. As I'm coming down, what am I seeing here? So I'm now first seeing my first Shakeel ring probably is going to come in over here now. First cricoid, it's top one. How? Do, why is it going up? Why am I not able to see the top one? Ah, uh, here. Okay, here. So, <coughs> see that? Can you see? This is a thyroid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see where we are. Okay. So here you have a cricothyroid membrane. Which one? Can you see this? You can see this reverberation artifact. Mm -hmm. So this is a cricothyroid membrane. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So I am now in my cricothyroid membrane here. See that? There is nothing there. There is no air. There is a just a reverberation artifact. Okay, see that? Okay, that's a cricothyroid membrane. Okay, as I am coming down, this is my first ring. Can you see that? Yeah. Tracheal ring. Huh? And then is my second tracheal ring. See that? Second yeah. tracheal ring. So you, you see all of them at one stage. See this? this is a, the biggest one is here you have the thyroid the gland, gland. V-shaped thyroid gland. As I'm coming down, I'm seeing the first, this is again the thyroid gland, okay? Now I'm coming down, what am I seeing? Reverberation artifact. Cricothyroid membrane. Cricothyroid membrane, reverberation artifact, okay? I'm seeing the reverberation artifact, you can see it, right? You can appreciate it, right? Mm -hmm. huh? Then I, That's not a bone, that's a reverberation artifact. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm coming down, there I get the bone, first bone. Can you see the biggest bone? This is the biggest bone I can see. Cricoid. Cricoid. Huh? And then I come down, what I see now here is the first tracheal ring, second tracheal ring. Huh? So, and this is the third tracheal ring. So, as you go down, you will see all of them. Okay, now what can you see on, on the, on say the right side, let's go and see what's on the right side. So, what you see on the right side is what, is the esophagus. You know, there is the esophagus there. You know, that's a carotid, that's a carotid, but you will see the esophagus somewhere. The jugular. Okay, swallow. Got a crude leaf. It went off. It was there here. Wapis. See? Dika? That's your. Someone there? Huh? That's a tracheal ring. Can you see? That's a cricoid. Yeah. That is a cricoid, the white one. When you come down a little bit more, come down. See, that's that's the cricoid. Come down. Vocal cords are here. Come down. Come down. That's a cricoid. See? Can you see? That's the cricoid. Okay, that's the cricoid that you see. Now come down. That's the first tracheal ring. 
हेलो वो सो नाउ नाउ सो व्हेन आई डू अ प्रीको थायराइड थायरोटोमी आई नो दैट आई हैव टू फाइंड द रिवर्बरेशन आर्टिफैक्ट सो आई जस्ट गो फ्रॉम द टॉप आई फिगर आउट वेयर माय रिवर्बरेशन सी दिस इज आई हैव कम डाउन ओके दिस इज माय ट्रैकियल रिंग ओके दिस इज सो अबव दैट इज वेयर आई मेक रिकोथर दिस इज माय क्रिकोथर मेम्ब्रेन ओके वेयर इज इट लेट्स सी दैट्स माय क्रिकोथर मेम्ब्रेन सो आई जस्ट हैव टू गो थ्रू दैट ओके इट्स सिंपल नाउ द अदर वे टू डू दिस इज बाय एक्चुअली कीपिंग इट लीनियर सो आई कीप इट लीनियर व्हाट एम आई सीइंग ओके व्हेन आई कीप इट लीनियर फ्रॉम टॉप टू डाउन Okay, let's see. Okay, so you keep it linear. I don't know why I'm not able to see it, but maybe we'll use the other probe. Let's use the other probe here, and then you have one, two. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. You big hypoechoic region, mm -hmm. and then you have multiple small small ones. So as I go down, what do I see? See, one, two, three. See, huh? So these are the cranial rings. Can you see that? And that's the tracheal ring that you can see, right? So the largest one is the cricoid, and then you see the rings coming down. You understand? So that's how. It, but obviously, it is easier to do it from here. It is much easier to do it from here. You understand, no? If I keep this here directly, for some reason, no, it's coming only from the sides. Okay. So from the sides, when you're seeing, you can see this entire thing from top to down. See, can you see the rings? <coughs> yeah, you can see the rings, right? Ring down, you can see that, right? That are the rings. Yeah, see, see, one, two, three, four. Can you see it? See? Can you see? That's this is the bigger cricoid one. This is first, second, third. Can you see? Huh? So it's very clear. I you know you can see very clearly what we are looking at. Huh? Cricothyroid membrane here. So let's go ahead. So this is cricothyroid membrane. You, can, you can't see it as a river, reverberation artifact because of the fact that you have to see it like this. You want to see reverberation artifact to see it like this. Yes. See that? Can you see the reverberation artifact? Yes. Can you see it? That's a cricothyroid membrane. Yes. You understand? So it is actually very simple to so do a. Uh, easily you can do it. So if you want to keep this like this, if you want to keep this like this, yes. huh? You should see only one. You should see only one tube. अब यहाँ पर तुमको दो tube दिखेगा because see this. यहाँ पर तुमको एक ही ट्यूब दिख रहा है ना बिकॉज इज इसे बिकॉज इज कोलेप्स्ड यू अंडरस्टैंड ना ही आर एबल टू सी ओनली वन बिकॉज इसे बिकॉज कुछ इज ओपन अप एंड वेट डाउन वापस कर सी ओपन सी इट कम्स एंड गोज राइट हाँ वन वेन यू पुट अ ट्यूब इन द इसोफेगस यूल हैव टू ट्यूब्स यूल हैव दिस एज वेल एज दैट सीन लाइक एन आर्टरी एन अ वेन यूल सी लाइक दैट बिकॉज उसमें हवा आ गया है यू अंडरस्टैंड अदर्स अनलेस ही एक्चुअली डिग्लूड्स यू के नॉट सी द इसोफेगस इट्स अ कोलेप्स स्ट्रक्चर You understand? It's a collapse. See, see that? It's a collapse structure. You understand? Huh? ठीक है? ठीक है. Get up. Thanks. So, uh, our technique, basically, which is called as the Green's technique, uh, used with the modified Kelly's forceps, uh, is is this is this what we have? So we have uh, a seeking needle first, a seeking needle that is there. Okay, a seeking needle. Okay. You may you may want to know whether you are in the trachea by another simple technique. You once you go inside, you attach your ETCO to side stream cable to this. Okay, you attach your ETCO to side stream cable to this. If you attach your ETCO to side stream cable, you will see some ETCO to coming on top, which indicates that this is probably inside the. It's a very so side stream means the one that we use for the GE ventilator. There are two kinds of ETCO tubes, mainstream and side stream. The mainstream is the one that the entire thing that is kept on the endo tracheal tube, and the side stream or the micro stream is the one that takes the tube from here and goes into the module. Okay, so the ventilator has got the side stream one, whereas the uh, Draeger has got the mainstream one. Clear? The blue one that you see is the mainstream one. Clear? So the first thing you do is delineate the anatomy. In any patient, the first thing is to delineate the anatomy. After delineating the anatomy, it makes a lot of sense to actually mark it out. Okay, now in an ultrasound, if you want to mark it out, also it is simple. So when you go from the top to down, you take a needle. Okay, you take a needle. You take, you take a needle. Keep the ultrasound like this. And if you want to know where to go to, just go with the ultrasound down, down with this needle. So you know exactly where you are because the needle gives you a random artifact. You understand? So once you get that, take out the ultrasound and go exactly in the center over there. You understand? Ah, uh, you can even keep it vertical, the transverse vertical, and then go 
from this down 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 till you get that area which is between the first and second tracheal ring once you get in that area you see this is where you want to go into okay uh, so with this you will actually figure out where you are inside with this you will figure out where you are inside you normally want to use air uh, you want to use uh, water so you go inside you figure out that you are okay you are inside once you are inside you are only it's a very small hole so don't worry about it it's a very small hole okay so you don't go through and through but if you go through, so it's like a central line no? you go in unlike a central line you press your through there it's not like that uh, you put an ultrasound look where it is and go inside uh, with the ultrasound you know the depth also you can measure the depth when you're doing the ultrasound and keeping your ultrasound probe you know that it is you know uh, 1.7 centimeters or 1.8 centimeters inside so you can visually figure out where you are supposed to go in I can understand. You can visualize where you are because it also gives you the depth, you know. On the side there is a depth, so you know exactly where you are going inside. So once you go inside, you have reached that place where you get the uh, where you get it. It is very essential to stop there. It is very essential to stop there and push only the guide, uh, the direct, the push only the uh, you know the angio inside. You understand only the sheath inside. It's very essential. You can't go inside, 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 and then you know you might be in the esophagus. Uh, you the moment you that's why this continuous pressure on this is very important. Once you get it, immediately stop. It's like a central line. No? You don't go through and through. Uh, but in a central line, you may want to go through and through, like an arterial line. You may want to go through and through, and then you get a flashback. Then you take it out. No, how you do an arterial line? Many times you take a cannula, you put through and through. Sometimes you put through and through, you get a flashback. Then you slightly slightly you take it out. You get uh, blood coming in, so you know you are inside the artery. Here you cannot do it like this. Here the technique involves you going inside with. Continuous uh, pressure. The moment you get stop over there, and it's important that you know how to hold the needle in central line as well as in in tracheostomy. It has to be held like as though you are doing you are playing pool. You know, you are, your palm has to be clear. The palm has to be holding everything, and the needle has to be held like this. Okay, you always have to have one of the object in your hand all the time. It is important that you don't let go of the uh, let go of any object because this can have problems with the, if it slips inside. Okay, so once you go inside, you are out. Uh, once you're out, the next thing is we actually. Ah, yes. Bed number push na. Basically, just you have actually secured where you are. Then the next step is actually to guide, put the guide wire in. Okay, the guide wire should always be prepared. Ah, uh, never put the guide wire on the patient's body. It can fall. Ah, uh, don't keep it on the patient's body. You are, ah, uh, you you are you know in a hurry to do things. You are uh, in stress. Don't keep it on the patient's body. It's always better to keep it at a uh, on the tray. So always keep this on the tray. Do not keep it on the body. It can be quite dangerous. You might slip. It might fall, and then everything will go for a toss. Okay. So keep it always on a tray. Okay. And keep it prepared. Keep it prepared. Don't leave it like this. Don't leave it like this. Keep it prepared. So you can keep it prepared by keeping it like this. Okay. Ah. Uh, then when when the time comes, you have to thread this through this. And as you thread it, there will be one place where there will be resistance. Okay, ah, uh, and you know the length of the trachea is ten point three, ah, uh, you know ten around ten centimeters. So you should be able to get it within within short time. If you are keeping on going inside, keeping on going inside, where you are, you are in the esophagus. You understand? If you are keeping on going inside, under jai 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 jai, rukhi ne jai, under the chala gaya, poor under the chala gaya, under the chala gaya. Where are you? You are in the stomach. Ah, uh, you can't go in because uh, it will not go in further because it has got a tip that is blunt. No, it has got a round tip. It will go in a butt somewhere. It will not go into the left and the right bronchus. Mm -hmm. You understand, huh? Because uh, this is only 2.3 centimeters. Look at the size of this. Clear, huh? So it will not. So you are not supposed to. You should cannot go inside too much. So that is the first thing. Uh, if the if the guide wire gets stuck in the process, in this process, if the guide wire gets stuck, like it goes inside, it gets stuck. Don't try to uh, pull the guide wire out. If you have to pull the guide wire out, you have to pull it out with the entire. With this entire thing together, if I put this guide wire inside my patient, okay, if I put this guide wire inside and this is lying inside, mm -hmm. now it is not coming out. Mm -hmm. This thing is not coming out. Mm -hmm. I have to take this out now because this has gone inside now. Mm -hmm. I have to take this out now. Mm -hmm. I have to take this out. So if this is not coming out, don't try to pull the guide wire. Don't try to do that. Ah, huh? you have to take out the whole assembly together. So now. Ah, uh, why is that so? Because if you try to pull it, no, it will abut somewhere and it will open. These are all springs. So if you look at it very carefully, now there are springs on this. If you look at it, there are springs on it. So if I want to hold it like this, see like this, open it. There are springs on this. See, 
Hold it and move it. Move it. See? Move it like this. See? Huh? You understand? There are springs on this. Okay? Huh? So if you try to, if you understand, huh? Somewhere, huh? So if you try to pull it out, if you try to pull it out, let it be this dilator, let it be this dilator, let it be that, it will abut against this and the springs will break open. If the springs break open, it is of no use. That dilator is of no use. So you understand it, huh? It's got springs here. Huh? It's got springs on this. Okay. It is those springs that are keeping the wire the way it is. Flexible and nice. Huh? If it goes inside, for example, if it goes inside huh? and, you, and it gets stuck somewhere, it's gone inside and it's got stuck here. You try to pull it out. What will happen? The springs will get out. Springs will come out. Then it will, uh, there will be a, a fracture of the catheter. The springs will get into the system. You will get pneumonia. Things like that will happen. You understand? So the spring should not move out. Right? Then, so the first thing we did is we actually put this inside. We put the guide wire inside. The next thing you do is you may want to use the red color. You may want to use the blue color. It's your wish. You can use this uh, white color dilator and go directly inside. Okay? You can do. You can do that. Now you know the length as to where it should be. You know that you have measured it, that you know this is how deep the trachea is. So you know once I reach this part, I don't need to now go perpendicular, I may want to go slightly slanted. Right? Huh? So I've reached this part and then I've gone inside. I've gone inside in one sweep directly, I've gone inside because I'm dilating. I'm dilating from here to here. Now this dilatation is small, though. This dilatation is very small. Once you reach inside, I will verify once more about air coming in from there. I may want to put ET sotos if I want to. Uh, but I will, I will know that I'm inside. Then the next step would be actually to read. Rewire this inside. Uh, rewire this inside, remove this dilator out. And after you remove this dilator out, then you use a dilator, the Kelly's forcep, the modified Kelly's forcep to force this particular thing inside. Now, this you must understand is very sim similar to the Greeks, uh, uh, to the blue rhino. Just take the blue rhino out. So, this is very similar to the inside of the blue rhino. So, if you look at the blue rhino, see this. It's very similar to the blue rhino. This means to say, you you have to go inside at least to this area, uh, and then once you reach inside, so the point is once you go inside, you go inside, okay. Then after that, you turn the whole thing uh, and you open up the faucet. So you go inside like this, go inside, and then make it perpendicular, and then you open up the faucet. Clear? You are first going inside. Then turning it absolutely perpendicular so that you are inside like this, like the blue rhino, how it looks, uh, and then you are opening it up. Okay. Once you open up, you have dilated it. Now, here can be a very difficult situation. If you dilate too much, then you are breaking the cartilage. And we are not here to break the cartilage. Okay. And that will occur if by any chance your position is not proper, you are going somewhere else and opening up in a different plane, instead of opening it in the same plane. You are putting it like this, and in the in the hurry to open it up, you are opening it up like this. If you open it up like this, what you are going to do? You are going to actually break the cartilage. You will create a tracheostomy. You will be able to go inside, but later on, this patient will have large amount of problems with respect to tracheal, uh, you know, stenosis and things like that. If the cartilage breaks, you may break the arytenoid cartilages. There again, you will have a problem with respect to later on uh, uh, cicatrization, scar formation, and problems with respect to talking. So it's very important that you remain in the same plane. You remain in the same plane and not like this or like this, huh? Because you will open up the cut. You will make, make a hole. You will put a tracheostomy, but the long-term implications may be too much, huh? So put it inside, go up straight, and open up the open, open up the entire thing. Here, so if it goes from here, you go inside, open up the entire thing. Okay, so if it's this way, it's going inside, going here, and then once it goes up straight, perpendicular, I open up this entire thing. Clear? Open up the entire thing, and then let the guide remain inside. Always remember to hold one of the one of the tips of whatever thing is inside your inside the patient's body. Okay, come out of the guide wire and then use this, use this directly huh, through the hole over here. It has to go inside. It will come out through the hole over here and understand to open this. To un opening this, many people don't know how to open this only. So to open this is very important. You know how to open this? Can you open this for us? Open this. See, so you understand? Now understand how it is. Uh, so if you try to open it like this, it won't come out. Okay, so open it and see. Uh, that's how you open it. Okay, so it's difficult to open it otherwise. If you don't know how to open it, it can be a proper way to open it. 
Ah, that's how you open it. Okay, and it's important that you don't throw this away. Why is it important not to throw this away? Say to first of all, you must understand that once the tracheostomy is done, don't try with this tracheostomy. First of all, you know will not decanulate quickly. Will not work. Accidental decanulation के chances कम हैं. Why कम हैं? क्योंकि it is a percutaneous technique. Your skin is holding it. Your skin is holding it. Okay, it's not like a surgical tracheostomy. So we don't need to stitch and all these things not required. You understand? But importantly, say after fourth to fifth day, you normally have a track track that is formed. So fourth to fifth day onwards, you have a track that is formed. Till then there is no track formed. It is just a small hole that is there, and you may entail putting. If this comes out, it is uh, don't do it yourself. If this comes out, if this percutaneous tracheostomy <coughs> comes out, what will you do? If this uh, say today I did the tracheostomy in the morning, okay. Tomorrow morning you were on duty, and accidentally this tracheostomy comes out. What will you do, Neeman? Well, what will you do? What will you do, Sachin? What will you do? What is it? the scenario? Is I did a tracheostomy last evening. Today morning you are actually positioning this patient early in the morning, and this tracheostomy comes outside. What will you do? So, so what will you do? You are positioning your patient. Neeman, because they are on duty. What will you do? God's word. Ah, I will. I will take this tracheostomy out and incubate mm -hmm. this patient. I will put an endotracheal tube. Mm -hmm. You understand? I will not try to put this back inside. Uh, it is not acceptable to put this back inside before day five, day four. Okay, because day five, day four, se pehle track form nahi rehta hai. Since there is no track, if you try to put it blindly, see, you must remember this. What we were trying blind technique. In the blind technique, we put a wire inside. Over the wire, we put a dilator, and after that, we put the tracheostomy tube. So the moment you take it out, collapse either with the skin will move here and there. There is no, there is no track form. And since there is no track form, before day four, day five, if the tracheostomy comes out, which is a possibility when you are positioning a patient or something like that, is a possibility. At that stage, what do you do? You just intubate this patient, secure the airway first, ah, uh, because this can be done at a later date. You understand? The first thing you do is secure the airway, put in an endotracheal tube and wait. You understand? You don't try to reposition this. You patient might lose his life. Don't try to reposition this back inside. Clear? Clear on this? So then, in that case, after you intubated the patient, when will you re-enter? Then we will call a surgical. We call a surgical person along with us. So because there is a possibility, I might create a false track here. Okay? Because now what happens is the the usual thing is once you put the tube inside, you can actually feel it with your finger. You can actually see it. You can actually see the uh, uh, the Uh, the endotracheal tube. You can see the endotracheal tube in that hole. If you can see the endotracheal tube, the right thing is to put in a bronchoscope. <coughs> put in a bronchoscope. Okay. Through the bronchoscope, see where you are. Okay. And with that bronchoscope, with the guidance of the bronchoscope, remove the tube a little bit. <coughs> put this inside. You will see the tube coming inside. You will see the tube coming inside. Once the tube comes inside, remove the endotracheal tube. Remove the bronchoscope. You are fair inside. That's how it becomes safe. You understand? That's how it becomes safe. So usually that is what is done. You find each other the day one or day two it comes off. Intubate this patient. Call for a bronchoscope. Call for a bronchoscope because it is not this way that tomorrow you put a guide wire. You can't put a guide wire. You you don't know where you are going. You are understanding because you have created a path. You there is something that is created. There is an incision. There is something that happened over there. So the anatomy is changed now. It becomes difficult <coughs> anatomy now. Since it becomes difficult anatomy, now that it becomes difficult anatomy, you can't use percutaneous dilatation technique. You can't go inside and put a wire and dilate. No, it's not possible. Huh? What you have to do? Intubate this patient, put a bronchoscope, and then pass this inside. That is the safest technique at that stage. You understand? Under visualization, that means under visualization. So all that, clear that? Then it, it becomes safest. Otherwise, it is not safe. Otherwise, not safe. So ideally, if if you are at day four, day five, wait, wait for some time. Huh? Then send for a surgical tracheostomy because this is a complication. It's something that shouldn't have occurred. It is much more easier to call a surgeon and get it done. Okay, at that stage because it's a complication. Clear? Clear on this? So, any doubts on the percutaneous tracheostomy? Uh, we discuss any doubts on percutaneous surgical tracheostomy? Anything? Any doubts? Any doubts on this? So, now I assume that you know everything about the tracheostomy. Okay? Huh? I assume that you know everything about the tracheostomy. We, I think we should not make a mistake next time we are doing this tracheostomy problem. Huh? We should understand how to do it. Clear? Huh?